Oh, come in, come in. All right, how are you doing? All right. Well, it's another wet day here in Wales. Um, I've decided to come into the shed studio. <laughs> I'm still trying to convince myself, convince myself it's a studio. It's now oh, quarter past three. I've gotten to half past half past four before I have to leave. Um, in the last video that we were talking about wiring the painting, I did mention this old canvas. I put some gesso on, and I just chucked a bit of blue on the back of it. Um, I want to show you um, a method of doing a very, very quick painting. Um, I'll change cameras so you can see what I'm doing as well. Um, this is basically uh, an adaption from a Bob Ross um, painting which, where he had reflective trees in the water and he used it liquid clear where he glazed over it. Um, this is something the students would learn. Um, if they've never painted before. So it's, 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 it's an easy process. Anybody can do it. You don't need skill for it. Um, you just need a little bit of um, um, flair, really. I don't say, I wouldn't say this actually incorporates a lot of skill, but um, have a try and see what you, how, we, how we get on with it. Because um, I've got a number of students that have learned this technique from different avenues that have um, had um, a little bit of success and is taking them on to progress on the different paintings. So, even though it's raining here, I've got a bit of bright light coming through. So I'm going to put my, my cap on, just to stop the glare off my eyes. I need to put my glasses on as well, so I can see what I'm doing. And, um, there we go. Okay, before we start, I am going to use a couple of sponges. Now, I pre soak these in some water. Just um, get any excess water off them now, because we don't want it to uh, interfere with with the uh, acrylic paint we're going to use and um you bring my tea oh you're a magic person i tell you what every time you come here you bring me a cup of tea i can't i can't ask for more okay so we'll put that there what i'm going to do now is i've got a bit of on blue there which i've just mixed neat on the palette um i'm not going to put anything with it at the moment maybe just a just a touch of, um, well I would put a touch of water if I put some water in my pot. There we are. Just a little touch of water. And I mean a touch, not not a lot, just to, just to thin it down slightly. Bearing in mind what we said about acrylic paint and how thin you use it. Just going to switch camera a second now and then I'll show you um, over my shoulder. So I need the centre you to have a little bit of blue in it so all I'm going to do is just scrub in a little bit of that cerulean blue very very lightly all I want really is just a, a little bit of blue to, to shine through now the background as I said has had black gesso applied to it and just a little bit of blue that I've just painted across but this is all you need to do at the moment this is uh, we can, we can, we've all painted something we've all painted a door or a piece of wood or so all we need to do is just very lightly put that little bit of blue in that's faded back obviously so you just Bring the brightness up slightly, just use a little bit of paint, just a little bit thicker than in places, just to give it that touch of um, brightness. Well, the sun's coming out now, it's a really weird day today. We've got an amber warning in Wales today, 3rd of the 10th, 2013. And, um, stop me from working as you know I'm a window cleaner so I can't really clean windows in the rain I got other things to do but they can wait until uh, the end of the month now I'm not thinking about what I'm doing here I'm just applying paint the, 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 the base of the trees are going to come roughly there so you know I'm, all I'm doing now is just chucking in a little bit of blue another little smidge of water on the paint there you go bearing in mind that 
acrylic paint does dry darker as it dries as I've explained to you before Okay, what I'm going to do now is I've got my sponge, which I rinsed. Whoops, which I rinsed out, and um, it's it's a natural sponge, so it, it, it gives a little bit of um, dimension to when you're actually sponging on. So rather than a straight sponge, a flat sponge like that, which doesn't give much texture, this gives more texture. So. Um, what I'm going to do is dip that into some green paint now. Um, I've got a little bit of sap green, which uh, which is next to a bit of um, burnt sienna, just to give it a little bit of a redness there. And I'm just going to tap in a bit of green. That. And what Bob did in, in this situation was he just used black and white. You know, you can do exactly what I'm doing here with just white gesso, and you'll be astonished with the effects you can get. Okay. As it's um, autumn, I, do, I think you Americans uh, or call it the fall, I'm not too sure. I think that's what you mean by the fall, this uh, autumn year. I got a bit of sap green, a bit of hooker's green, a bit of burnt sienna, uh, yeah, burnt sienna. And again, I'm just going to apply a couple of different dabs of colour in, because we want a mixture of colours. And what we're trying to represent here is some background trees. You can brighten these up slightly with a touch of yellow ochre, which I'm going to dab into the mix. These are autumn colours, obviously. And then just don't worry. No, don't worry, if, like Bob used to say, you know, happy little accidents, just keep blending them in. If some of them are too bright, this is acrylic we're working with now, we can wait for it to dry and just dark, re-darken. So, what we'll do there, that section there now as that dries, I'm just going to put a bit more um, dark green over that. And thinking of shape and form as well. So this is all we basically doing is just touching colour on with a sponge. So it's it's not not too um, difficult uh, for you to get a grips with as a beginner. And don't forget the acrylic will dry very rapidly in a sponge. So what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm going to move on to the, the grass area and give that a chance to dry. Okay. And using a round brush as Bob would do and he would put some grass in like this. Yeah. So we're going to weigh more towards the front now. We'll put some grass in.
use it different ways push up little bit of different color here and there just to highlighten it up I mix a little bit of yellow walk into the mix just to give it a bit of like as if the light is zinging there leave a bit of negative space negative space is the, the shadowed areas little mix bit more um, yellow walk into the mix as you can see I'm not overworking I'm just letting the brush do its own thing I'm mixing a couple of different tones in here and there I'm basically building up the grass area leave in some negative space a little bit of lightness there put a touch of lemon yellow into the mix now just to like as if the light is zinging through the trees just a little touch on the tree themselves don't think too much you know you, all I'm doing really is just pushing the brush changing direction you know it, it it'll, it's very effective this type of painting especially for a beginner because you get you get an immediate effects you know you, you can you can really go to town and really mush this in here and you think oh my dear I've spoiled it but all you need to do then is just get a little bit of black gesso on your palette on your pet on your brush sorry and just re-blend it in and you just put some negative space back in place I use this method mainly because for somebody that's never painted before then it's instant gratification and it really does spur them on to um to a new lease of life, you know. You could use a brush on the side and just tap in a couple of bushes. Like that. And we leave that dry. Okay, not quite dry yet, but there we are. It's only now half past three. And we've managed to accomplish that. Now, in the traditional Bob Ross method, he would do this. So you get some black gesso on your brush and just draw up and draw up and draw up as you used to say every tree has got have a friend and you take one end slightly a thicker trunk but just slightly twist your brush so it gives it a bit of so it's not so uniform as the word I was looking for 
I picked up a bit of green egg as the background is still a bit wet, but don't worry too much about that. And then we could put another but don't forget now trees are not always straight. Okay, so you need to think of that. Don't worry too much about the base here. We can sort that out in just a second. Now we can put another one there slightly further down. Not worrying about the tops of the trees because you can't see them in this painting. There. Now at that stage um, you should let it dry. But because it's we're on a time thing here. And I'm trying to show you um, the Bob Ross method type of painting. So I just got my brush out of the water now and I'm just tapping it dry. So I'm gonna mix a little bit more yellow ochre into my green and here I'm just gonna push up and in the process a little bit of dimension then a bit darker green then over the bottoms of the trees What we can do then, um, which is a bit of fun, a very small little palette knife, but you could use a bit of credit card or something like that. And what we need then, is get my gesso, this is white gesso, and we've got the thick bit on the top of the lid. Just place it on the tree and drag it and you can do that both sides Now, the reason I've done the backs of these trees black is because they are silver birch, but because the light is there and coming through, the back of the trees are in shadow. So. doesn't really matter this is just a, an example painting that you can try which will encourage you to, to paint further the time is now uh, 25 to 4 don't really want to speed this up so this is going to hopefully be an actually actual timed painting but all I want to do is show you the way of starting a painting 
in its most simple process it doesn't involve tracing or drawing or copying if you've never drawn before it's no reason to stop yourself from painting there's a couple of different methods of getting an image down onto your canvas or whatever you want to paint some of that is very controversial to a lot of artists but I believe in being able to paint without any constraints and conform to normality you get some people that will plan everything out sketch it if that's going to interfere with your artistic flair as a beginner then don't constrain yourself you can learn to draw you can learn how to put an image down onto paper onto canvas the most important thing I think is the ability to be able to paint something straight away to give your confidence level a little boost now, by all means this is not a what I would class as an absolutely brilliant painting but it's as I said it's designed to get you started on the road of art So what we can do while we wait in for that to dry now is we get our that's what they call a script liner brush. You can see that it's a script liner brush. All right. It's basically a very long, thin hairs which you can get to a nice sharp point, and they 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 are rigger brushes. You know they they they're very very drawing very uh, painting very thin lines etc. So you need to thin down your gesso slightly so it's I would say the consistency of ink. Now when painting when painting branches, so there's there's your your tree. Okay. When painting branches this is haven't been degreased so I do apologize when painting branches be free D don't be too straight and too concise okay because the leaves of branches and they, they, they don't bend like that they flow they follow the light okay so just be free use the hold the top of the brush there and be a little bit more flexible because the further you get down to the fell obviously the more constrained your, your brush strokes are okay so you want freedom see that it's a Y what is a Y there's always a V okay Y and V Oh look, there's a bend. So what I'll do, I'll just put a little bit there. And it looks as if a branch has snapped off. So, happy little accidents. You get the idea? Okay, so we need to put that into practice. Trees go every which way, okay? They don't just come out like that. They'll flow everywhere. So the good starting point is coming off there, maybe. And as I as I'm moving my brush, I'm I'm twisting it so the line is getting very thin. So it looks as if the branch is going away from me. Okay. Now 
Now it looks like it's coming from the front of the tree now. So it's twisted behind the tree. So what I can do, if I bring out a bit of white down like that, now it looks as if the branch is the other side. It is now 25, 20 to 4. Okay. I'm going to show you a couple more. And what I think I'm going to do then, I am actually going to speed this up because you don't really want to watch me draw in no end of branches here. Okay, so believe it or not, it's only now just gone quarter to four. So all I'm doing is just put in the odd bit of white on the branches just to give it a little bit of definition. You see I'm not really fussy because your eye will make up details anyway. So okay. You just darken that down slightly. There you go. Anyway, you see the idea, okay? Well, you would spend a little bit more time uh, doing this with the students. It possibly could run over just a couple of weeks. Um, and I say a couple of weeks, that's normally like two hour, two, two, two hour sessions. All I'm trying to show you here is that you can actually develop a painting you know you could put a little path in there which would be quite nice you could get a brush you could let me have a look pick up some uh, a bit of raw umber and start in there Scrub in a path. Mix a little bit of black with it just to give it a little bit of Back to your green, which got a bit of. Black and yellow actually makes a good green, you know. It looks like there's a bit of a bush there, doesn't it? So you can see that we can develop these paintings quite nicely. So I'm going a bit more, a bit more green now. A 
time is now 10 to 4. Set. Go back to my my flat and mix a bit of black with my blue amber, bit of shadow. Path. I'll tell you what would be nice now to get your script liner, put some sail on blue on it, put a couple of bluebells in. You could even Put some um, all right soon I'll change this now from a more autumn scene to a spring scene. How easy is that? And it was really nice. Put a little bit of red with the eye he's gonna catch. So just put a little bit of red there. Not much. Couple of fox gloves maybe. Let's catch the eye. Paint in sold. Well, you could at this stage is is that dry? No it's not. Right, time is now. Just go on 10 to. Short flat. Back in a gesso. Pull it through your paint in. Like Barbara used to do. Bit of a twist in the branch here, eh? bit of a knot there, look at the bad year that year. I'll put another one in straight across then. Five to four.
as you're doing this I suggest don't go straight because it's closer to you you want to go slightly rounder lark like that look see So now we've developed a nice little scene. We'll go back in with our round. Put some grass below the bottom of the tree. Once more. Cover the daffodils, but not daffodils. We've got daffodils on the brain. And blue bluebells. What's he doing now, we've said? I should show you now. All I've done, put a bit of paint on there, I'm going to drag it through with a damp brush just to look like a little bit of contrast on the path. As a final touch, a little bit of white with your green. Bits of grass in. Oops. Okay. Can't be accident. I'm going to dry your brush and just just knock our back slightly. Yeah. Yeah, bear any mind. The critic will dry darker. There you go. Time is now four o'clock. Okay, yeah. Script layer. Sign your name. No, you can't see it, but it is there. And jobs are good. In. A very simple process, a very simple painting, not a great deal of skill needed in that. Um, something you can complete surely within two to three hours if you really put your mind to it. So you've got the background in there with a bit of blue, you've got a couple of the trees in the distance, you've got your mid ground um, silver birch, you've got your foreground silver birch, you've got a couple of little details, some flowers. That's a lovely little painting that you can put on uh, on the wall. Um, watching I hope that's going to be helpful for you and um, as you can see that's a lovely little painting and you could surely be proud of to put on your wall
very quick, very simple, not a lot of effort, not a lot of skill needed in that. And uh, the black and white ones are even easier, trust me. Um, I basically taught um, my six year old grandson to do uh, a painting like that. So, um, in fact, this has been hanging on my shed wall. So you gotta laugh because it's, uh, it's a studio. This was done in 2011 by my grandson. Okay, and that is pretty good for his age. And um, he's really proud of that one. But he has progressed since then and obviously going on to good work now. So you can never start too young. Again, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and um, press like or leave me a comment in the, in the comment box. Any questions, I'm happy to help. Thank you very much. Bye.